Victor Kurtigram. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, good. What have you been up to this week? Um, Just a, a bunch of editing this week, actually. So, uh, finally catching up with a bunch of stuff. So, it's kind of good. I think by the end of this week, we'll have nothing on our plate um, backlogged or, or to edit yet. So, that way we can start um, pretty fresh next week, which is... Um, Wow, I'm, I'm gonna say that's a. I'm gonna say it's a first. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, I know it's a big, big deal. So, uh, so I'm pretty uh, excited to to get a bit of life balance back. You know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say there was some pretty horny uh, watch footage that I've been seeing the last couple of days. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. I know you shot it with your probe lens, but how did you light it? Um, I guess that's just something that. You'll never know, um, and I'm not going to share. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, again, it's it's the usual case of hey, I, I, yeah, I can do it, and rock up on the day, and then figure it out. So, um, I used it. I, I lit it using one one uh, like edge lit LED panel, and it was super close to the subject because that probe lens actually is from f14 to f22. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you need a lot of a lot of light. <clears throat> so I just lit it one side, and then um, used a, a fill card, you know, to, to bounce in the light, or even just get that reflection on the glass. So it's interesting. That's- I feel like there's there's a lot of different ways you could you could light it. I've actually did a bit of YouTube today on how how to light um, watches, you know, after the fact. But um, it's interesting how other people light it, you know to to bring out the detail like i was really focused on the faces um because a, a lot of the watches we shot were secondhand watches um so you know some the inside the face is going to be look like brand new but then some you know you're going to notice some scuffs and stuff on the, on yeah. the outside of, of a secondhand watch so and with grime video, just, mix yeah, yeah exactly like even though they've believe. been serviced and whatever exactly yeah so on that macro detail like level, um, everything shows up. So it was, it was, yeah, it was just such a fun project. Like I was, I was so excited when we were there, and I was just like, okay, give me another watch, give me another watch, you know. Like I was just really excited to do it. So yeah, that's um, shot that when when it was last week or this, yeah, last week. So this week did did a couple of edits on it, and um, but I'm excited to work with that company. They're they're a jeweler on the Gold Coast and um, they specialize actually in what, what's called icing or well, icing out, you know, jewelry. So it's like whatever your normal jewelry is, chuck shitloads of diamonds on it and that's um, I guess what they spe- specialize in, you know. I mm. guess there's a, there's a big market for that style of jewelry on the on the Gold Coast. So, um, yeah, for me it's exciting because it's, it's just, you know, we, we've chatted about watches probably – off offline uh, a bunch and now it's like it's really cool for me to be, be able to be in that environment and um you know br- bring uh the jeweler to life you know so we're mm-hmm. gonna do a couple of kind of docu-series kind of things as well of him making the jewelry and he's actually he makes some really complex stuff which is which is really cool so but yeah that that's i guess that's probably one of the bigger projects at the moment that that um you know, I've, I've had my hands on. What about you? Um, all sorts, uh, plenty of property. Uh, yeah, I mentioned today I did my white card, which is what you need to work in the construction industry. So, um, yeah, officially a tradie now, um, which is yeah. which is good. Um, but yeah, back to the... Uh, oh, I shot a, a flower company uh, this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not not a florist like a uh without saying the name of the company it's like a f- flower like flower delivery planner. um no no like oh. a gift boxes um with flowers in it anyway. oh yeah um yep. i'm sure you've seen seen them and seen their jars around everyone yep. has got them in their cupboard it seems uh anyway uh, back to the watches really quick um a couple of things that i thought of just then that's a really interesting way to do it because obviously the probe lens is a macro lens right yeah 
so you're obviously not far at all from the watch like how, how far are we talking centimeters from the watch well under 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 centimeters i would say wow. i was maximum like five mil mil off the, wow. off the um, okay which is which off the dial was at one point pretty scary because the ap was like two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch and here i am with this this Heavy. stupid looking probe lens like right next to it so if at any point someone kicks the um tripod or um uh, you know it, it falls out of axis it's gonna hit that watch so i said to the guy i said man i'm, I'm keeping a, a, a close eye on this because you know we could easily scratch this watch i don't know how you know they're probably a bit harder to scratch but yeah at the same time if you've got you know a 10 kilo camera rig just going straight into the face of a watch like um yeah that there might be some damage there so i just made sure that um i sandbagged everything so that even if someone did kick it hopefully it wouldn't move but being that close to the actual to the sapphire crystal to the it, crystal it is, yeah it's it's pretty scary at the same time you know yeah i can imagine it it's pretty durable um yeah, 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 but I, I mean, still watch don't, I don't want to take the the risk on a $250,000 watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my watch is 30 years old and, you know, I wear it every day and I, I don't have any nicks or scratches on the, on the, um, on the crystal. On the sapphire, um, yeah, exactly, yeah, so it is durable, yeah. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is the interesting thing about having your lens that close to the watch is you can get a small you know, by by regular lighting standards, you can get a small light source in very close, which becomes a big light source because obviously, you know, so, softness of light refers to relative size, right? Like the, the sun yeah. is a tiny, tiny speck to us. But, yeah. you know, that's actually a giant. It's bigger than our planet. But, you know, relative to us, the sun is a hard light source because it's so far away. You move that. Yeah, exactly. You move that same sized light closer; it becomes a soft light source. So you know, you disperse it with clouds. Yeah, it becomes bigger and softer. So you might even have just you know an LED panel the size of a phone, but right yeah. next to something tiny, that's a huge light source. So exactly, that's actually a really interesting way to think about it. And the one thing that I'll say is that I have done a little bit of research about just because I'm interested in watches about how to shoot watches like they would do for you know um advertising and yeah it is to do it the way that they would do it for a magazine let's say probably the most difficult thing i can think of to possibly shoot because when they do it for that purpose they literally light every component of the watch and shoot a different shot for each and comp it you know there yeah. might be yeah there might be 15 the, 20 300 shot they'd know there'd be like 300 shots yeah you reckon 300 because, yeah well at, at least 50 i'm just saying 300 yeah, over exaggerating but because um either they'll use a tilt shift to get it on the same plane as the um as the watch because that you know the watch is flat like this and then your camera is actually on the tripod like that, so you're not getting any reflection. But oh, then yeah. you can actually tilt, use a tilt shift um, or a tilt shift mechanism, not so much the lens, but yeah, to then be on that same plane so you can shoot at f12 or 13 or whatever it is. Yep. Or or you can shoot at f8, f whatever you want, but uh, and not have a tilt shift, but then focus stack. So... That becomes really tricky because yeah, you, you you actually can't really bump or move anything out of line too much. So it's like millimeters at a time, and then what they do is they focus stack it, and then they'll comp it using um, special software, uh, which is like a plugin to Photoshop, and then it comps it all together, picks up picks the best, and then yeah, I, I would say it would take. Like over ten hours to comp, uh, to to retouch one of those watch images that you see, like probably more. Yeah. Yeah, probably more. Which is just so, crazy for one one watch. Yeah. For one image. Yeah. Yeah, one so image. Yeah. It's not just shooting, like let's say fifteen to twenty different components um, of the watch. Every component needs to be st- You know, have to have what. 
five, ten images stacked with focus. Is that what you're stacked? saying? How, yeah, how many shots would focus, go into a stack? Then, yeah, it would be, say, 30 shots. Or, In or one? More. It could, it could, it, it could, wow. Yeah. Big, and, and then because you also, you want to light each component, say it's, you know, the crown or or um, whatever piece of the watch, yeah, you have to specifically light. It's the same as they do with um, super reflective um, bottles for like um, perfume commercials as well. Same kind of thing. So it's like you've lit it, you know, <clears throat> you can do a dumbed down version where you could probably get away with 20 or 30 shots. But um, again, yeah, because everything usually needs to be in focus, you know, for it to look you know you want you want the whole watch to be sharp yeah but yeah and especially because every component the idea of a luxury watch is you want to show the texture of the brushed oyster steel and that's going to be different to the texture of the steel on the bezel and then the, the crown has a you know might have a different finish and then the crystal yeah, obviously yeah. has to be smooth but then underneath that there might be like a mother of pearl on the you know dots yeah. around it and it's like you have to sh- yeah. correctly show the texture and you know the yeah. uh you have to tell the story of each piece because that all of that is actually important to a watch person yeah and yeah, yeah it's uh i remember watching this guy uh bot vidson have you seen any of that guy's videos he does yeah, I was he does a lot today. of yeah. a lot of rolex um yeah. and uh yeah it blows your mind and but then again like i was saying with the macro lens if you're so close perhaps you could get away with less because this guy's got you know c stands and um yeah cards and lights and everything this and that. yeah exactly. absolutely yeah. everywhere it's an absolute like death trap of a set yeah but that's because he's camera is a little bit further away it's and he's so, shooting so, with... exactly yeah anyway Where, very yeah interesting. whereas for me it, it was a different setup you're right because you're worried about all these reflections but because i could bring my bounce card in super close and then i could even have a uh, you know an- another subtracting from above yeah i'm, I'm not getting and you know all that crap in the room yeah it's true. just because you yeah essentially you bring your set in so it's 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 still accessible. You can still swap the watches in and out. But then because you're on that macro detail, like within that macro, you know, you're so close up that you can actually stop the reflections and, and bounce light in. Um, it's like a, a, the miniest studio you, you've ever seen, you know, and it's yeah. really cool. Like I, I, I get it. Yeah. I just get excited about being able to shape light and manipulate it, you know, because especially with um, such an item, it's, it's like I want to um, I want to see how the light plays, you know, off off each each bit of the dial, yeah. Um, which is the way that it was meant to be made, you know, it was to be able to show off um, the textures and the finishes and the the craftsmanship of on on such a small, you know, item. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's why I think that's why I love watches too, is because it's a feat of engineering it in itself, you know, just to yeah. be able to to um yeah com- compile it all together it really is one of the few sort of remaining like um you know really artisanal uh yeah it, it is a feat of engineering you're absolutely right like um the i mean just think about it you know when i think about things that would be you know crafted or created to the nth degree i think about like an instrument or you know like a a a grand piano or something like that but the thing is um you know even something like that doesn't actually have to be as perfect as something that is supposed to keep time mechanically forever based on the movement of your wrist like yeah the it boggles the mind how can how can you accurately i think you know over over you know a couple of weeks you might lose a couple of seconds but it's just yeah yeah it's it's almost magic there's no batteries there's no electricity there's no internet yeah yeah yeah. um yeah anyway let's move along from that but yeah like i said for to my knowledge one of the most difficult things to shoot and made even more difficult if it's secondhand because inevitably there are you know 
imperfections and um exactly talk about 10 hours to retouching it it'd probably take 10 times that to oh, to try and make see. a second hand watch look like a new watch look brand new yeah I yeah agree. under yeah. a macro lens cool all right i've got a couple of things i want to want to hit on on uh on this episode um i don't think it'll be too much for a long one uh but i want to get your your opinion and, and your thoughts on a couple of things i've been pondering um so let's roll that little uh Roll that little bumper and get into it. I've been back on Instagram the last couple of weeks and I've been trying to make a conscious effort to post really high quality stuff because uh, I've had a really good response and I've even, you know, it's funny just from two, two posts, in fact, from the one post that I did last week of just of the sandwich shot I had a couple of people hit me up I ended up booking a job um, unrelated to that but you know just reminding my friends that I'm a competent yeah you know a competent yeah, photographer yeah. because yeah. I, I might have said this to you in the past sometimes I have people my in real life friends contact me and one of the first things they say is are you still taking pictures are you still a photographer and yeah. It's kind of like, it's it's my fault, if anything. Um, but it's kind of sad because like the amount of photos that I take on a weekly basis, and for people no, exactly. to not, you're like, yeah, to not realize like, that's that, that's all I do. Yeah, what do yeah. you mean? <laughs> but then again, if you're not showing people, you know, if you're not showing it online, then how does anyone know? Like exactly, and that that's yeah. it. that's that's what I always say to Cara as well, because you know she's been working full time. Um, you know, for for over a year now, and um, that's the thing. I'm like, if no one's gonna know you're doing it unless you tell them you're doing it. You know, that's yeah. the same as me. I don't know that anyone's doing anything until you tell me or you show me that you that yeah. this is what you do or this is your career or, um, so it uh, it. I know it sucks. It's hard to post. It's hard to do it. But like, you're already doing it. You just need to literally capture what you're doing or or share what you're doing so yeah it's something that i've wrestled with a lot and you know i've been pretty sort of down on um social media you know instagram in particular i've been pretty down on it for quite some time and you know i've, I've cut it out of my life for the better part of the last couple of years um but now that i'm just really motivated with my photography and really motivated in um, the channel and just the things that I'm shooting, I am making a conscious effort but trying not to shout about it at the same time because um, I'm really trying to take on board Hustle Quietly and I yeah. I want to get your opinion. Um, I have been wrestling... Okay, first of all, let's start here. I look through my Instagram and even my YouTube channel and I see that a lot of stuff on there doesn't represent me anymore. What do you what are your thoughts? Do you reckon it's weak to delete or archive old things? Or do you reckon it's a good thing to not keep up that old stuff on there? Hmm. I think it I haven't thought about it too much, but I think that it probably is a good idea to just archive a lot of that stuff that um, necessarily doesn't show uh, your brand or you in the current, you know, in your current ability or current um, just just way that you want to be seen, I guess, you know. So you, you're right, I think. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many posts I've got, over 4,000 posts on Instagram because wow. it's 10 years old or, or what, whatever it is, right? So um, I think it's really beneficial that if if i just culled you know that that first at least six years of, of whatever was happening like you can always look back on our, um your archived posts mm. through instagram back end anyway so it's like if you are using it as a means to sell your business or, or a platform why why would you keep up stuff that i guess isn't relative to what you're doing now or or if or if it's not if it's just crappy posts um 
it should probably just be archived realistically yeah mm. you know when, when instagram was first out I, I posted photos of of my dinner like just because yeah we didn't we didn't understand where it was going what the platform was even about and back then i didn't even have a camera so it's like yeah why does why why should that still exist on the platform that i'm trying to sell myself and my business yeah yeah i i don't know i agree i truly agree with what you're saying but then sort of the other part of me thinks that i am not trying to i suppose i I sort of see everything through the lens you know my my approach i think of myself as a youtuber less than you know a commercial photographer in the way that you that you sort of um exist um and i always want to approach that as you know even let's say i'm doing tutorials or guides or whatever i never want to approach it as i am a guru and i know all the answers to everything i always want it to be like this is the journey that i'm on and if i can help someone else on their journey as they follow my journey you know it's the the guide versus the guru sort of thing and i kind of really like looking back and seeing over the years how it's progressed and where my journey has taken me and like i said some of them i think it doesn't matter you know if you're posting your dinner or you're posting you know silly things that you took on your iphone for um then that is probably not you know here here nor there but um yeah i i honestly don't know the answer um, and, and YouTube in particular for the videos, it's a different story altogether because I'm quite proud of the fact that I've got, you know, probably approaching, it must be getting close to, I don't know, 275, 300 videos on YouTube at this point. And most of those are terrible. Like I'd say 200 of them are terrible. Maybe 250 of them are terrible. But it's kind of a badge of honor that I've put, that much work in over the years to put all that out and i suppose i feel a little bit that way on instagram although i've only got a couple hundred posts on instagram um i i just think it probably depends on the on the platform as well you know um because i guess the more hours you clock up on youtube the better it is you know but for instagram the platform you know you could you could literally you could have reset this year and just started posting again or Mm -hmm. if you just reset every year i don't think it would matter because you'd already have the clients and then you'd already have um you know stuff to post but that's probably where it it like differs like a question could be would you should you have um a personal instagram and a business instagram separate Mm. Um, you know and that's probably where you could just post you know big pants photo would be its own um, business page as such you know and that's where you posted all of your um, content and then you know your own one PJ could be your, your family stuff and personal and you know because that's the thing every time you post stuff of your family I'm always like oh, this is the content that I'm here to see, mm. you know. And then when you post your, um, you know, work stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is sick. But it's like if there was two separate things, I would still follow both for two different purposes. Yeah. Um, to me, that's, that's what Facebook I, is for. Yeah, but I just feel like Facebook, well, to me, Facebook is for marketplace now. Like there's no <laughs> yeah. other... And old yeah, people. Like, yeah, and, and dad messaging me, mm. even though he has my phone number. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's for me, Facebook is purely for marketplace mm. and, and pretty much the sports news. Like, because now it has some weird feed page that shows me, um, you know, sports news. Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like for me, my even though my Facebook friends is maxed out because back in the day everyone in a band just added everyone ever because 
you know, you can invite them to an event and hopefully you, plug you stuff. sell yep. 10 tickets to your show. Yeah. Yep. But now I feel like everyone on Facebook is just watching. Well, it, it's it's kind of every platform is just, there's just a lot of shitty videos happening, you know, <laughs> yeah. viral videos. And I feel like that's that's on every platform now. But yeah, especially Facebook, it's, it's pretty much, you know, I, I went to the laundromat the other night. There was this lady just who had her phone on like, whatever max volume is it was like it's triple that and she's just watching stupid cat videos on loud it, you know just scrolling facebook and i'm like that's what facebook is now i feel you know i don't feel like i get anything um productive or, or yeah, out of facebook literally yeah. so so for me it's like i spend more time i would say on youtube now than any other, other platform because um it's it's educational you know for me anyway because i just research yeah. stuff that i want to know know more about because guess who knows more than me everyone you know? so, <laughs> the world but, well, yeah exactly the, so, the collective yeah, like mind of the world yeah 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 um yeah i uh i don't spend that much time i try not to spend that much time on the other ones but youtube um is a big black hole of my time to be honest i don't even really watch netflix like jem watches netflix sometimes i watch something with her but like my my entire entertainment is just youtube and then in the car you know i listen to i don't know a podcast on spotify or whatever but um youtube's fantastic um okay so what about the other going back to instagram for a minute the other thing that i've been sort of tossing up and I've flip-flopped a couple of times in the last two weeks is whether to show my likes because I've always thought I'm just going to keep them on because first of all, I don't post that frequently but when I post, it's usually because I have something that I feel like is really worth posting and usually that will do reasonably well, you know, and... Like I said, a couple of weeks ago, I posted the stuff from the the sandwich shop or whatever, performed really well. And then I was like, you know, I was kind of riding that high for a couple of days. And then the week later, I posted something else and it was fine. It just didn't do quite as well. And I didn't realize how much... I would actually care about that because in my mind I didn't. (laughs) In my mind, I'm like, yeah, people cares about that, but I don't really care about that. But it actually it did affect me a little bit and now i'm thinking first of all there's nothing worse than someone who has likes on and then turns them off if on a post if it's not doing well like that is insecure that that is truly insecure i I feel like it's like i feel like it's got to be all on or all off and i just don't know where i stand on that side of the fence do you have your likes on yeah i can't remember I just I just turn it off because it off. Um, again it is that thing. I remember when it, you know say two years ago when it was like you you needed the likes for justification that your post yeah. was any good, right? Yeah. But I feel like it's totally different now because I'm com- confident and comfortable in what I produce that mm. it, the likes don't matter. Like I could. That's the thing. I have eighteen thousand followers, and and I could get from fifty likes to a thousand likes. So and and as and I feel like I don't have any control over that um, mm. because you know the algorithm changes monthly, and then also I don't, I don't know if you know it depends if if like the other day like I've been creating reels lately just just to try and taste it right. Mm. get a taste and um the other day adidas uh global shared my reel which Mm. which was a a pretty big deal i guess um because they don't really share just anyone's reel so Mm. i was was pretty stoked about it and yeah within within the within the day it it got twelve thousand plays or views or whatever right Mm -hmm. and up until that point the maximum views i'd had on a reel was like you know three thousand so it's like it's real, real nice that there's all these views and all that, but it actually, I, I don't really know if it converts into anything, you know. Mm. And it didn't make me make me be like, oh, my work's better or anything. It was just, 
a bigger company shared it you know it, it yeah. wasn't like and it wasn't even for me for me it wasn't even that good of content it was just a couple of photos slammed into a, a real template you know so yeah, it wasn't yeah. like it's just one of those uh situations where you know you spent a minimal amount of time to produce something and it's done better than you know something that i've spent 10 times the amount of time for um, sure all because because you know a bigger platform has shared it so <laughs> yeah it's for me likes or plays or views just just doesn't really count anymore i, I for yeah. me i feel like what i'm trying to do is just produce good content and just put it up and that's it tomorrow's another day a new another piece of content but just the regularity of of posting is what's hard yeah especially if you want it to be half good but then even then you know the quality isn't even a hundred percent either because you know i'm trying to post a lot more videos now to somehow be in the explore page or you know videos the future blah 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 and um you know it's just compressed as hell like that that video i took of of those watches in 4k like it just looks so delicious mm. you know but then by the time i slap it in a bit of a border so it looks good in my f feed then you know it's 1080p and you sl slap it up there compressed as hell and it's just loses all the detail mm. it's yeah. still there but it's just a low quality version of it so um it, it's really hard for me to appreciate it but i know that it's content and if i needed to put it somewhere else so then i would have the high quality version right to to show yeah. or in a show reel or whatever so it's almost like the thumbnail is what people see and that's what is good enough these days you mm. know it doesn't have to be this feature film it's literally yeah. it's literally five seconds of you know 480p footage but if you've captured it correctly then i guess it's still engaging right yeah yeah i don't know i still haven't dipped my toe in in the real thing and i really don't post video on insta but yeah yeah <sighs> yeah it's kind but of the thing is kind pj like why why wouldn't you? you you literally produce at least two videos a week yeah surely you could be creating reels of 30 seconds of each video and putting it on on instagram to build your youtube platform that's the thing mm. like it will feed people to there like even even if you have a smaller following on instagram and then vice versa like you could build your platforms together if if you actually spend that extra half an hour after you've already done the edit ready for youtube and then you've made a stories version which will go into reels and just cut out 30 seconds of the, of the of the best stuff like that's what people do to market their businesses you know and you have the ability and you have the content and you're already doing it so why wouldn't you feed another platform do you think in my opinion um and i've tossed up a lot over the last over the COVID era seeing the rise of tiktok because a lot of people have told me you should you should be just cutting up your existing content and turning them into TikToks or Reels or whatever. But then I've heard from a few other friends and a few other creators that I listen to on podcasts, you know, they'll do something or they'll make something for TikTok and it'll go stupid viral and they'll do crazy numbers, but they'll get virtually no conversion because the way that reels shorts and tiktoks are consumed is that you're going to watch 100 in a row like the the idea is to get you just caught in this void and how often does anyone ever stop what they're doing you know 50 videos into the 100 video binge and leave that website or that app to go somewhere else because i actually don't care at all about building a following on tiktok if it doesn't benefit youtube or i suppose yeah, instagram yeah. like I, I mentioned i i really haven't put that much thought into instagram for years now because it's not my focus i i'm coming back around and I, i'm starting to 
try and see the bigger picture a bit. But to be honest, most of the most of the people I have on Instagram, I'd say three quarters at least, are friends and are not necessarily the audience that I would want, you know, or the audience that would be interested in my content on YouTube. I agree. So think about this. YouTube is a global thing. Yeah. Instagram, I feel like, is more local thing. You yeah. know, the, the way that that we get booked, Cara and I, is is by you know a friend of a friend knew someone, and all of a sudden I'm the guy with with yeah. people. Yeah. Um. So why, why would and and you you literally said that you posted one thing last week, and then you yeah. got a booking from it that was obviously mm-hmm. a totally different thing, but. Mm-hmm. It was still creating awareness within that local the circle, you, Sphere, yep. you know, within. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I know you're trying to build the bigger picture, but like you can just feed this smaller thing through Instagram, even if it was one video a week. Again, to a let people know that you you literally f- photograph every single day, like you, mm. that you are still in the industry, that you're still doing it, and they might just see something that they like to be like, oh, hey, look, you photographed the pizza shop. You know, we own a a small takeaway as well. We need some content because mm, everyone true. does. Yeah. And then there you go. Like, you know, it's it's like two hours of your time on a, on a weekend where you can be, I, I guess, you know, for everyone, yeah, we, we love creating and that. But the goal also is to be able to support yourself and your family and also this passion, mm. you, you know. So I feel like... If you just created one of those videos a week that were 30 seconds of whatever you captured on YouTube, then it doesn't, it might just be lost in the feed, right? But at the same time, the people close to you or the the people that follow you will see that. And that's where a conversion will happen, you know, not Mm. so much on, on a bigger scale. It's just, it's just a lot more intimate, I feel. But anyway, that's that's just my point of view, and that's my um, experience with Instagram. You know, that's why I feel like I need to keep feeding it because people 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 will just scroll and scroll and scroll and get lost in whatever. You know, so it's like mm. you need to keep producing the content to at least be in the mix. Are are yeah, that's what I reckon. Yeah. And I feel like you do a pretty good job, perhaps less so now, but certainly the last couple of years, you do a pretty good job of always being one of the first few circles that I see on my stories. You know, whether it's the fact that Instagram puts you first because it knows I'm going to click on you or whether it's the fact that you're just posting with enough regularity and shooting with enough regularity that you're always not too far from from the top of the stack. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Like like you said, I think it it just goes uh it goes towards um a friend of a friend is looking for something and you're top of mind, you're top of you're in the conversation, exactly. you're in the mix and, yeah. and and by default you're the guy. Again, it's just like a, a you being fed a commercial or, or an or an ad or a billboard. It's the same thing. Just being in the public eye for someone to understand um, or, or to, to know that that's what you're doing, you know. I like it. And you have actually made me think of one more thing that would pull me over towards what you're saying. And that's, I think, for me, the biggest benefit of YouTube outside of the actual platform of YouTube is it has made people in real life sort of see me as more it's it's been more social proof and it's been it's made people see me as perhaps more of of an authority more someone who is you know valid to have an opinion um on yeah. things just because i do talk about it on my platform albeit not a huge one um but the i think you're right if i was to post some stuff of let's say me shooting in the sandwich shop or the barber shop or running around at a gig or whatever else like i don't think many photographers actually show what you know the process of them shooting i mean the beauty of photography is it doesn't matter how you get it done 
what matters is is what the image is at the end the end result but I, yeah i think if anything my biggest advantage as as a photographer is my um personality and my interaction and i think um i think even just not being afraid to show that and and to show how the sausage is made you know it doesn't even i don't even mean giving tips and tricks on something i just mean showing yeah, the no. way that i interact yeah. and and perform the shoot i think that could also be beneficial and it's something that i've never thought of for that audience on instagram before yeah 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 exactly and all it has to be is hey i'm down here at frankston or whatever that whatever that place you went the other day you know in the Mm -hmm. shopping center it's like hey you know i got kicked out of this shopping center and then it's just like bam 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 and then you're out and it's like there's enough content in there you know that that video that you uploaded it was great but you could just have, yeah, 15 seconds of that. I know that sounds offensive, but mm. it's like a 15 seconds and it will get people engaged to to be like, oh, this is what he did, you know. And um, if it's something that they're interested in, they will click to, oh, you know, you should always have that YouTube link still there. So mm. then it is, it, it feeds that as well, you know. Otherwise, how else, how else are people getting from your Instagram to your YouTube? you know, click in the link in your bio yeah. or literally every time I search your name, it comes up with some DJ. So for yeah. me, I, I don't, I, I don't want that guy. Sure. You know, I, want, I want PJ. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, just having those, um, I don't know, conversions. Yeah. Yeah. It's another, uh, another line. Anyway, I'll sell you an Instagram. In so yeah. No, I'm not. I'm going to try that. I'm actually going to try that. You've um, you've planted the seed. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, I can see the benefit now. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to try that. Tool of the week. Have you got anything for me this week? Um, so I picked up this guy. I, I don't know if you've seen it before. Uh, yeah. It's the X100V. Um <laughs> Oh, I thought you were talking about the filter. <laughs> no, what have you got no, on the I've already, I've, I've already plugged the filter. That's the the moment Cine Bloom. I've already plugged that once. Oh, no, I don't know if you've ever seen I, that red one. That looks cool. That's why I love it. It's red. It's cool. It's like it's like the red ring on the old Canon lenses. You know, it's like whoa. Anyway, you have to get one. Chuck it on. Because well, what, what about this? You know, yeah. Well, you know that you know that shoot that you did. <laughs> yeah. The hood's good. I got the I got the different hood, and it's a Fuji one, and it's a piece of shit, and it keeps falling off. So it's the one with the the flanges. It's the flange rather than the actual like that. It looks like yours going panoramic mode. But anyway, so this afternoon I went to the golf course, and I've been shooting a lot um, in the last couple of weeks because I've actually had the time doing a lot of drone stuff. But then just taking this instead of you know a bigger body yeah. professional camera and and I guess watching your YouTube and then having seen that experience of you just literally snapping away, like that's what I'll, I've been doing on the golf course. So yeah, and 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 it's just crazy the the quality, or w- once you know how to process it, you know post process, just just the JPEGs. You know I've I've used it on um you know just uploaded it to an app on my phone and then mm-hmm. you know I make it look the way that I would want it to look. Um, yeah, it's just. It's a high quality, high quality thing. Like it's it's crazy. So I've really been enjoy it because again, it's fixed, fixed focal length. Um, that's just what I got. So there's no, oh, I'll change for a wide for this shot. Oh, actually, I want to shoot telephoto. It's for such this a load off mentally. It's such a load off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, again, um, I haven't been sh- shooting with it much, um, just because. I kind of just leave it somewhere, you know, on my desk or wherever. And um, I've taken the strap off. So I think I need to chuck it back on because I feel like when the strap's there, at least then I just put it straight over my chest and I'm I'm out the door. I'm going wherever, you know, family yeah. events, whatever. So um, I feel like, yeah, it's it's just, again, <laughs> it's my total of the week every week. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. Well, yeah, I was actually going to plug the uh, hate. Hayogi, Hayogi, H-A-O-G-E, 
lens hood for the X100V. I actually, I'm, I've got to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed for it, by it, because I thought it was going to be a little Why? bit more snug and secure, but it does actually move. Mm. It's not going to come off, but I just worry that in just having it on me, it's going to move, and one day I'm going to take a photo like that, and it's going to be in the frame. Like, it, it doesn't sit it doesn't stay perfectly straight on it. I don't know why. Um, it's just a third-party product. So I have the actual Fuji product and it and it's shit and it falls off. But on my old X100, um, what was before the T, um, it was, oh, yeah. it, it was a, oh, the F, yeah. So the F and it actually had a JJC, I think is the brand. Yeah. Um, had a hood and it dude it was solid as it would oh, it wouldn't okay. spin wouldn't and so i'm like i might have to look at getting one of them because i still like to have the lens hood yeah anyway but i mean that's another hundred and something bucks that i don't really mm. want to spend so that's why yeah. i've just taken the hood off and just this is fine you know it, mm. it's still protected i can i can run around and it's great so yeah um yeah Quick side note, because I've had in posting a lot of Fuji content on the channel recently, I've had, I want to say three or four friends very interested and considering a purchase. And um, yeah. I always just check back and forth because if I want to recommend it to someone, I want to see what the going rate is or whatever. Um, they're sold out absolutely everywhere. Like wow. literally you can't even get them on Amazon. Um, and the only place that I saw them that had them in stock, they're twenty two hundred dollars. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's gone up, you know, four hundred bucks since when we bought it. I think I bought it for s just under seventeen hundred, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think I, think, I would. I, I would have. I think I happened to buy mine on, on sale, and um, it was a pretty good deal at the time. It was around Christmas time, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the going rate was somewhere around eighteen hundred. And the only one I could find online was like twenty two hundred dollars, um, yeah. so pretty mind boggling. It's a year or two old. This camera, it's not, it's not new, yeah. new, and uh, they've gone up in price. I mean, like everything. Even to buy an A seven three now, like it's like twenty seven hundred dollars to buy an A seven three now. It's just a lot of money. Yeah. For a body. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Anyway. We can talk about Fuji stuff later. Let's uh, let's snap it off there. Thank you once again for joining me, mate. I've uh, sincerely enjoyed the I've enjoyed the different pers perspective, and I'm going to um, take into account what we uh, spoke about today. So thank you for that. If you have stuck around this far, I I really appreciate it. Also, the best way you can support us if you like the video is to give us a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a thoughtful comment down below and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Pew.